Magandang umaga, gising na pamilya at Pilipinas. Let's turn our Bibles to 1 Peter chapter 1. You know, this week is now Holy Week. And so I want to talk about what it means to be holy and making sure that it's not just a title, but a mentality. So much of the religious community uses holiness as a, a title or something to be attributed to or a, a status or kind of like a video game, a level that you reach. But actually, holiness is a mentality that every single person that considers themselves a believer of Jesus Christ should hold to. The word holy, another word that people just throw around, literally means to be set apart, to be distinct to be set aside, to be marked as unique and different. And so in 1 Peter chapter 1, the heading of this section is be holy. So Peter is writing to Christians, not encouraging the opportunity for holiness or, hey, you guys should strive to reach level 10 holiness. He's commanding them, be holy. And in verse 13, he says, Therefore, prepare your minds for action. <clears throat> be self-controlled. Set your hope fully on the grace to be given to you when Jesus Christ is revealed. As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. What a very different tone than what most churches carry in their services. Peter loved the church more than any church leader could ever love the church. He's the one who started the church. He's the forefather of the church. He's the one that Jesus gave the keys to the kingdom in Matthew chapter 16. Peter is speaking from a spirit of love and what is in their best interest. He wasn't worried about church attendance. He wasn't worried about their money or their approval. He was telling them what they needed to hear from God. And he says, therefore, prepare your minds for action. What a different way we live now. So much of the Christian world is being soothed and encouraged that they don't need to prepare their minds for action. But actually, we need to be prepared for when Jesus comes back. He says, be self-controlled, not try to be self-controlled, not control yourself, kind of. He says, be self-controlled. Set your hope fully on the grace of God given to you when Jesus is revealed. Set your hope fully, not partially, not partly, but 100% on Jesus, on the grace that is to be given. For most people in today's time, their relationship with God is an element of their life. It's like something they take out of their pocket. It's a part of their life. That's not the tone that Peter's speaking to here. He's saying, Christ is your life. You need to set your hope, not on your career, not on your family, not on your, on, your, on your kids, not on your schooling, not on anything except on the grace of God, which is to be given when Jesus is revealed. He says, oh, as obedient children. So there's only one type of child in the eyes of God, and that's an obedient child. Now, do obedient children disobey at times? Yes. But you need to be defined by, hey, you're obedient. You strive to live by the scriptures. It's not just something that you hold to during Holy Week or when you go to church. This is your life. As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. So we see that there's a past life and a current life as a Christian. It's not then and now. You've got to live in the now. You can't pretend to be something that you're not. That's the opposite of what it means to be holy. It says, but just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all that you do. So much of the world may go to church, yet they live in total ignorance. But the expectation is to be holy. This is not a title. This is a mentality. This is an expectation from God. He says, be holy because I 
am holy. Holiness is one of the most challenging things about being a disciple because that's what people feel challenged by. When you go to work and one of your coworkers is talking about crudely about a guy or a girl or they're cursing or whatever it may be and you ask them, hey, could you stop? They don't like that. When, when you live holy, people are gonna see not just what you say, but they're gonna see the way you live and it challenges them and they're gonna challenge you. Maybe in a group of friends, they go, oh, oh I'm pastor, sorry, sorry, pastor. Don't mean to offend you. And, and we don't like that because we see the people around us and we don't see God physically. And so then what do we put our hope in? In the grace? No, we put our hope in relationships and what people think of us. One of the best examples of someone who strives for holiness is my wife. My wife is an incredible example of holiness. My wife became a Christian when she was only 13 years old, very young teen. She became a disciple. But like all teenagers, she was pulled by the world in many directions. And she even found herself living a bit of a double life at the beginning of high school. But there came a point in her last year of high school that she said, you know what? I don't want to live a double life. I want to be a real Christian. I want to be a real disciple. I want to actually walk the talk. I don't want to just go to church and then my life is different. And so her last year of, of high school, she made a decision. I'm going to put my actions where my faith is at, where my belief is at. I'm not just going to go to church. I'm going to actually live like a Christian. And there were consequences for that. It, she got teased a lot in school. She became known as the nun, even though my wife wasn't Catholic. She was going to a Christian church. They called her the nun. Why? Because they weren't aggressively trying to hurt her feelings, I don't think, but they just felt threatened and they felt challenged by her, her decisions. At one point, even a young man asked her to go to prom together and all of his friends said, dude, there's no point. She's not going to go with you because you're not a Christian. But he asked her anyway, and sure enough, Colleen said, well, why don't you start by coming to church and then maybe we'll see where it goes from there. I appreciate my mom, my wife's example. That's what she's an example in. That's the thing that attracted me to her from the very beginning was that she loved God more than anything. She loved God more than me. And to this day, Colleen loves her relationship with God more than me. What about you? What area of your life are you not holy? Do people know you're a disciple at your workplace? Not that, oh yeah, you know, I'm a Christian. No, no, do they know you're a disciple? That they watch the way they talk around you. They watch the way they behave around you because of your convictions? Or are you getting by by just not standing up for your convictions? Jesus says in Luke chapter 9, verse 26, if you're ashamed of me, I'm going to be ashamed of you. My challenge for us today is very simple. What areas of your life are you not holy and proud of it? Maybe at school, maybe with some of your friends, maybe in your home, maybe at your workplace. Please understand, God loves you. But when you refuse to make it obvious that you're a disciple of Jesus Christ in your workplace, you're telling God, I don't love you with all my heart. I love you with most of my heart. I love you at church. I love you in this place or that place, but I'm not willing to take a stand here. Today, I want to challenge you. Take that stand. Pray. Make a decision and let people know that you are a disciple and you are proud of it. To God be the glory. Have a great day. Close your eyes. You can trust me. I'm just on the internet. I'm not near you. You would be expected to behave a certain way because of your royalty. Hey everyone, I hope you're enjoying The Daily Dose. If you haven't already, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. I want to ask you a favor. If you're interested at all in a personal Bible study, message me. If you want to come to a virtual Bible discussion, I can help you find one in an area near you. If you have any prayer requests, please message me. If you're interested in any of those things, I would love to help you strengthen your relationship with God.